Hey, this is going to be an introduction video for Chapter 15, Digital Systems. In this video, we're going to cover number systems, Boolean logic, logic gates and circuits, logic minimization, flip-flops and counters, programmable logic devices and gate arrays, state machine design. These concepts will be covered in more detail in later videos, but we're going to provide an overview in this video. So we're going to be talking about number systems first. So the number system we're most used to is the decimal number system. So the decimal number system means that is, it is basically what is called base 10. Base 10 means that each digit will be multiplied by 10 to a power and then add it up to find the actual number. So for example, we have 141. And then this one, we're going to multiply by 10 to the 0 because it is the 0 digit, least significant. This we're going to multiply by 10 to the 1st, so by 10. And this by 10 to the 2nd, which is 100. And with that, we have 100 plus 40 plus, so this is 140 plus 1, and then we get 141. And I do this just to fully exemplify the process because once, because we're going to be working with a lot of number systems, the, the number systems that we're going to be covering is, are going to be binary, which is probably the most important. This is base 2. So instead of tens to the power, we're going to multiply by 2 to the power of 0, to the power of 1, and so on. Another number system we're going to use is octal. This is going to be base 8. And something interesting is that when we're talking about bases, it's going to be the number of possible digits that there is going to be. So for binary, we have 0 and 1. And for octal, we will have 0 to 8. Actually, sorry, 0 to 7 because the 0 counts. And now the last one that is probably important for what we're doing and in general is the hexadecimal number system. That is going to be base 16. So it's going to go to, and this one is the most interesting case because we're going to include letters along with numbers for the possible digits. So we're going to go from 0 to F. So the way it works is you go from 0 to 10 and then you do A, B, C, D, E, F. And those are kind of new numbers that we consider for the hexadecimal number system, which we will cover more later on. The next topic is going to be Boolean logic. So Boolean logic gives us the tools to be able to conduct operations on binary, on the binary number system. It is centered on three main operations. And these are AND, OR, and NOT. So what these operations do is, first of all, NOT will invert any input. So if A, an input A, is 0 or 1, then the NOT operator will give a result R of 1, 0. So it'll be 1 when A is 0 and 0 when A is 1, so it's inverting the output. The way not is written is with a line on top of the letter, so the variable. So this is not. Then we have and, which is pretty intuitive to understand. When you have two inputs, A and B, by the way, these are called truth tables, which we will cover later on and they will help us create more complex systems. Um, the result is going to be one only when a, both A and B are one. So there is only going to be one, one output. <laughs> and 
and there is the AND operation. So that is represented as a multiplication, but it is not the same as multiplication, so be aware of that. And finally we have OR. OR is pretty intuitive as well. It's just going to be one when either A or B are one. And this includes the scenario where both are one. So the result for this is going to be just 0, 1, 1, 1. And by the way, this is just counting in binary, so this is going to be 0, this is going to be 1, this is going to be 2, and this is going to be 3. So this is the output for an OR operation. And it is written as A or B as an addition sign. So this is OR. With Boolean logic, we'll be able to create more complex systems where the result is a factor of even four or five variables and, you know, actually be able to create uh, a system that works the way we want it to. So our next topic will be logic gates. Logic gates are what we use to create um, the binary operations in circuitry. So we will still have the same basic operations of Boolean logic. That is going to be the AND gate, the OR gate, and the NOT gate. And the AND gate will look like this and will accept as many inputs as necessary. So this will be the output F and this will be a input and B input. And this logic gate represents the Boolean logic operation of AND. The same goes for OR, except the symbol is different. It looks like that. And you will also have as many inputs as you need. And the output, of course, will be only one. Finally, we have NOT, which by itself will look like a triangle. Um, with a little circle at the end. It will only have one input and one output. So the result here will be A and B, A or B, and A not. You can also combine these logic gates and you can have what is called a NAND gate. And that will just be the inverse of a regular AND gate. So that is this little circle. This little circle kind of means NOT when combined with another logic gate. The same goes for NOR gate. Um, this one's not very useful, but it exists. And we also have something that we did not cover in Boolean logic, but there is a logic gate that is pretty useful, and that is the XOR logic gate. So that looks like this. And the X stands for exclusive OR. So with that, hopefully it's easier to understand. This will mean that with inputs A and B, you will only have a one output when only one of the inputs is one. So here we'll have zero, here we'll have one, one, and with this case, it would be a zero because it is an exclusive OR. So it's, it only activates when one of, only one of the inputs is, is one. Our next topic is going to be logic minimization. So for logic minimization, this is re with regards to having a truth table with a desired output F right here. And with the given inputs, again, we are counting from zero to three. With these inputs, we want this desired output. In order to find kind of the combination or the operation that we must do on A and B to have this desired output, we have to find either the sum of products or the product of sums. 
Now, when I say product and sums, I am referring to both the and for the product and the or for the sum. So, so let's consider sum of products. Um, if you can relate it to math, it's pretty easy conceptually. It's just going to be a sum of products. In this case, an or of ands. So we will be looking for the ones in the truth table. So here they are in our function f. There are two ones, and these ones occur at a and at a not because a would be one, a not would be zero, and b. In the term of product of sums, it is worth mentioning that we're looking for zeros and an a would be a zero and an a naught would be a one. So, but that's for later on. It's not very used, but it's useful to know, especially sometimes when they ask you to convert between the two. So here we have one term. So this is one product, and then we're going to sum it with the next term, which is this one over here, which is going to be a and now b naught. Okay. So this is our result. Now, this is not always, especially when we have more variables and a more complex function, it is not always going to be the simplest form. In order to find the simplest form, we can either use Boolean algebra and simplify everything, which is a lot of work, or we can use what is called K-maps. So K-maps are incredibly useful and it is probably the most you will be doing regarding digital systems. Basically, you're going to put the inputs. Let's say we have three inputs. For this, it doesn't make a lot of sense with only two inputs. But if we had three inputs, we would have zero and one. And here, this is interesting. Here, we're going to use gray code. So not regular binary. We're not going to count. 0, 1, 2, 3. We only want, want one bit to change, so we're going to use gray code, which gray code, which counts 0, 1, 3, 2. This is because only one bit will change from interval to interval compared to this situation where between the one and the two, two bits are switching from zeros to one. So that is how we set up a K map of three variables. And then we're going to put in the function, whatever function it is. And then we are going to group in groups of twos, fours, or eights or anything that is can be divided by 2 to the power of something. For example, here we have a group of 4. Here we would have a group of 2. And we can always go across um, the K-map into the top. And we will cover this in a lot more detail later on. But this is basically logic minimization. So once you do these groups, you find the terms for each of these groups. For example, for this group, we will have A and B gets canceled because it is the one that changes, C naught. And so instead of having a single term for each of these ones, we just have one general term that covers those four terms. So this will cover those four terms. We will later be able to create systems that are state dependent. The way that we are able to do this is with something that acts as a memory, that the output is dependent of the previous input. So the way we do that is using flip-flops. For example, the D flip-flop, the JK flip-flop, the T flip-flop, and the SR flip-flop. So these flip-flops will have what we call excitation tables. 
These tables will basically show what output will exist with a given input and a given previous input. So the previous input will be a variable for the excitation table. And using these flip-flops, we are able to create state-dependent systems. When you create these digital systems in real life, you can either use IC chips, which are integrated circuit chips, or you can use something called FPGAs. FPGAs are a very useful tool that allow us to create these digital systems using code instead of actual circuitry. That is compared to ICs, which are very small integrated chips, which will have the logic gates and you will have to connect by hand. They are very useful and have languages such as Verilog or VHDL. And we can use FPGAs to create state dependent systems. And to create state dependent systems, you would need to create a state diagram. The basis of the state diagram is defining states and giving the, and assigning them binary numbers. So we have state 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And then we have to see what combination of the inputs should carry it from state to state, or stay within the same state, or skip a state, and go to the next. Once we have this conceptualized, we can create the, tu the truth table, which we can later use logic minimization to find the actual sum of products expression, which can allow us to use it for a flip-flop, and we are able to create a circuitry that is able to create this kind of behavior. And that is mostly everything about digital systems. We are going to do more videos regarding all of these topics, but I hope it was a good overview of what is going to be covered in chapter 15.